Hello. Hi. Hi, everybody. It is Tuesday, uh, and that means it's the April 18th, 2023, and that means I'm going to go live on Facebook and YouTube every Tuesday at 3 o'clock. And today, I have a special guest with me, and this is actually a redo, replay, because my special guest has some wonderful information to share with you. And unfortunately, we had technical difficulties last week. And she has two recipes that she's going to be sharing with us also. So I'm super excited for that. So my special guest is Rachel Brown. And she is the author of For Fork's Sake, her book. Her book came out last year. And it was actually selected as one of seven recommending reading favorites of plant-based books for 2022. Seven of the most um, favorite. So that's quite an accomplishment. So welcome, Rachel. I'm glad you're here. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me, Val. It's great to be here. Mm -hmm. Glad we get to do this again. Yes. Mm -hmm. And where are you located? And yeah, I'm, I'm coming from uh, Scotts Valley, California today. So you're at afternoon. We're right at noon here. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm in Westland, Michigan, and spring decided to give us a hit because we experienced some 80 degrees. And then yesterday it was really cold. Today it's 43. What's it like there? <laughs> Oh, wow. You know, I think we're supposed to be low 60s today. Um, but yes, it does feel like finally last week where, you know, the flowers are blooming. We have wild ceanothus, so it smells like lilac outside, which is lovely right now. That's wonderful. Yeah. So uh, just uh, you want to give everybody an introduction to yourself, like how long have you yeah. been, you know, eating whole food, plant based and just a little background on yourself? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, we, my family and I have been eating plant-based now for, uh, 13 years, a little over 13 years. And, um, you know, I grew up, I would say eating pretty healthy, um, pretty, uh, standard American diet, but my mom was mostly vegetarian. So we had a lot of vegetables, always fresh fruit. Um, it was a kind of thing at every meal we had fruits and vegetables. Um, but you know, I, I was an athlete, but I always had high cholesterol. And in my early 20s, I was told that I should go on cholesterol medication. And I really didn't want to do that because my dad um, was always on cholesterol medication and he would have to change medications because some odd thing like he'd lose his taste or something, you know, would he'd have some side effect. And so I just didn't want to have to go on medication. Um, so my doctors would say, um, you know, cut back on cheese or dairy, eat less eggs. And I do that. And, and my cholesterol would always just creep up. And, um, then in my mid twenties, my, um, nephew who was five years old was diagnosed with cancer and his mom was in nursing school at the time. And, um, she had a professor who asked her if she looked at the role of nutrition in cancer. And at the time they had like a small farm, grew their own meat, had a huge veggie garden, but, um, she had whole mozzarella cheese the year before we had 13 chickens at the time. Um, and she said, you know, you should read this book and watch this documentary. And that was, um, the China study and forks over knives. Um, and I read that book and I, immediately was pretty actually angry <laughs> because I was so upset that nobody had ever told me this information. And um, so we decided to give it a go. We, we watched Forks Over Knives as well and decided, okay, let's try this for 10 days. So I got my blood drawn. We cut out all X and oil and um, I couldn't get back in for my second blood draw to till 17 days later. But when I went in to see my doctor, he said, what did you do? Uh, because whatever you did, keep doing it because your cholesterol drops in 17 days. And I couldn't even do that with medication. So at the time, that was both good news and bad news because, you know, we were really strict during those 17 days and we were going, oh, my gosh, how are we going to do this? You know, my kids were six and eight. So um, so I thought it was going to be a really tough sell. But um, but it really wasn't. You know, we we made this transition. We all felt so much better. Um, you know, digestion, skin, energy levels, sleeping better. I mean, all these things just resolved, not to mention our cholesterol dropped. Um, 
I did some genetic testing later to find out about the cholesterol thing. And um, we've got the APOE4 gene, one of them. So we're not the most likely to get uh, Alzheimer's based on our genetics, but we're the, the second most likely. So my dad carries that gene, I carry that gene, and my son does. So that was more reason for us to, um, to do as much as we could with our lifestyle and our eating habits to avoid further medical problems down the road. And my dad, my grandfather had Alzheimer's and died of pancreatic cancer. My uncle died of pancreatic cancer. My dad has Alzheimer's right now. So, um, so finding out that what we ate and how we lived was 90% of whether or not we got disease um, is huge, you know, was really, really huge for us. So uh, I, I have a background in geography is what I studied in, at University of Washington. And um, I taught yoga and Pilates for years. And I went back to massage school and was doing that, um, a technique called pain neutralization technique, helping people get out of chronic, which was wonderful work up until COVID. And then I couldn't see clients. And that's when I decided to um, go back and get my plant-based nutrition certificate. And um, I do consulting and all of that. And I just was looking for a way to spread this information as quickly as I could. And so I decided to write the book that I wish I would have had 13 years ago when we transitioned. So for fork's sake is... Um, it really is. I hope everybody reads the China study. I think that's a hugely important work. But for people, you know, I talked to a lot of young families and people who are starting out and just going, I don't have the time to read a thick book that's really heavy on science. You know, I just I don't read a lot anymore, you know, so I, I made this into an audiobook as well. It's four hours long. So um, I give the basics of the why? Why is this the best thing we can do for our health and for the planet? And then how? How do you actually do this? So it's a quick start guide so that you can pick this up and read it and give yourself 10 days and try it for yourself. You know, talk to your doctor first, get your blood drawn. Um, and you will see, I, I almost, I, I can't guarantee it, but I almost guarantee you'll be so amazed at all the different effects that that happen to you. I get weekly emails from people who, you know, have read it and they're like, weight is extra weights just shedding off. I'm not even trying, you know, I'm sleeping better. I'm saving $400 a month, somebody said, on medications and food that I used to spend. So um, I wanted to dispel the myths that it's got to be hard and it's got to be expensive and all of that and just really tried to make it easy for people. So I was excited. T. Colin Campbell endorsed the book, Dr. John McDougall, Dr. Anthony Lim, Dr. Esser, uh, Leanne Campbell, Drina Burton, some really wonderful endorsements. So um, it's been fun to see see people grab onto it. And I've been doing podcasts and um, speaking events. I'm speaking at a local library again tomorrow night. So it's been really fun way to to help spread the word about what all plants can do for us. That is wonderful. Yeah, you're definitely have some wonderful healing stories also, and uh, your cholesterol coming down fantastic and transition and then you just did your heart's desire and you wrote the book that's helping people along the way and that's what it's about you know pushing the message out there and helping other people and you know getting the word out and that's why i decided to do this live every tuesday whether i'm doing a recipe or someone else is doing a recipe and today you've got some desserts i do, so, I do. yeah, yeah. One you want other, to get started? Sure, I will. Um, one other thing I was going to say is that, um, yes, in helping spread the word, um, this the I decided early on that um, fifty percent of the profits from the sale of the book would go to charity, and one percent of gross sales goes to one percent to the planet. So it really is my way of um, trying to give back because we experience so many benefits, and I want many others to experience the benefits. So yes, so today um, I thought we would make, um, I use the acronym in the book, HAPPY. So we go from the SAD, the standard American diet to HAPPY. Um, which is healthy and gay because the acronym whole food, plant-based, no oil, like woof a pub no, you know, it's hard to say. So um, these I call, this recipe is in the book and um, it's on page 61 and these are happy peanut butter balls. So um, as you can see, they can take many forms and um, they can be, the basic recipes in there. So you 
You can make just peanut butter sweetener with whole oats. You can make it with tahini and sesame seeds. You can add in all kinds of yummy things. Um, top with uh, cranberries, roll in cacao nibs. Um, you can make all kinds of variations of this. And it's just, it's one of these snacks when our kids were um, six and eight, like I said, you know, sometimes it was tricky to find something to go in their lunches that they took to school um, that wasn't a highly processed bar or, you know, some cookie with lots of sugar in it. So um, so that's where this this recipe came. And, and we're really active. We cycle, we trail run, we rock climb. Um, so finding some energy rich foods that pack well um, have been great, too. So um, yeah, so I'll show you what we do for these. So the recipe in the book, one half to one cup of peanut butter. Now, not everybody likes peanut butter. Some people can't have peanut butter. So that's okay. You can use any nut butter. So you could use um, almond butter. You could use sunflower nut spread. That's just sunflowers. Um, our Costco has nutso. I don't know if you can find that where you're at. It's a combination of cashews, almonds, Brazil nuts, flax seeds, chia seeds, hazelnuts, uh, pumpkin seeds, and salt. That's it. Um, like I mentioned earlier, one of those balls, you can use tahini. Um, and some people aren't looking for energy rich things. They're, they're not looking to add calories, you cut calories. So <clears throat> the other thing we've discovered, which is amazing, and I don't use a lot of processed foods, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and by processed, I'm, I mean, I think this is Dr. Greger's definition of processed being um, something has been added or something has been removed. So we try and eat whole foods as they come. That doesn't, I mean, we use frozen foods and all that, but um, they're whole foods. So, you know, we eat tofu and we drink soy milk, but we try not to have soy protein isolate, you know, because that's been extracted and processed and all that. So, but with peanut butter powder, this is um, peanut butter that has had most of the fat removed. So you go from, you know, regular peanut butter having 15 to 16 grams of fat. Um, this powder takes it down to um, one gram of fat, um, two grams of fat. I have my glasses on. <laughs> I, I absolutely um, adore peanut butter. It's one of my favorite yeah. flavors. Of course, you know, I don't overeat it, but... It's just so rich and so delicious. It's it's one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. And you can use this to make, you know, peanut sauce to go on veggies, which we'll do a lot of times. You can also find um, we're all, all out, but this was um, powder as well. So um, so you can use whatever nut butter you want. The only other thing I would say about nut butters is make sure when you go to buy your nut butters that it is literally just nut butter because um, I'll show you what I'm doing here. Oftentimes um, when you get a nut butter, it also has as um, oil added, some sort of sugar, whether it be high fructose mm -hmm. corn syrup or um, some added sugar. So Yep. And we you want to read the label and stay away yep. from those sugars. That's for sure. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We, we don't need any of those extra things. So, um, so you start with the nut butter and then you add a sweetener. And when we started out, we um, weren't vegan. So we used honey. So people can use honey if they would like, but there are all kinds of other options as well. So um, you can use pure maple syrup, this little container we took on a bike trip this weekend. Um, you can use agave um, or you can use date syrup. That's a really popular thing now. You can make your own. These two I grabbed from Trader Joe's. Um, they're just made with different kinds of dates. This is Diglot Noir, I believe it is. And um, these are Medjool. So um, you can make your own. You can just buy a, a pack of dates and um, cook them down or throw them in a high speed blender with some water and make your own as well. So um, I'm just going to do about a quarter cup of date paste. And I haven't, you know, you probably could make this with a, um, a, you know, solid sugar, but it just, it mixes so much better with it being kind of a, a liquid. I always use brown rice syrup. That's my preferred sweetener. Yeah. And yeah, when I make my peanut butter treats similar to what you're doing, it's always brown rice syrup. So that's yeah. my preferred sweetener. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good one too. Yep. Yep. Let's see if this one drains a little bit better. 
And I'm sorry if you said it, I maybe I didn't hear. Okay, so we have a half a cup of the peanut butter and how much of the sweetener do you add? Um, a quarter cup about of the sweetener. So I'll show you, I'll dump this in. It's kind of like making uh, mud pies when you're a mm -hmm. little kid, if you ever made those in the summer <laughs> on the sidewalk. So it's all about getting the consistency down. Um, and different, um, different sweeteners will um, kind of react a little bit different depending on the nut butter and, and what you have going. So you just want to mix these together and um, you want it, you know, slightly runny. If you need a little more sweetener to make it a little more runny, you can do that. But basically, we're going to we're going to add things now from this stage just to really make it stick together so we can roll them into balls. So from here, you can add oh, there's a whole bunch of options. There's uh, you can add oat flour. Um, and this this oat flour, I putting some oats into the Vitamix and grinding them up really fast. So you don't have to buy oat flour. You can make it yourself. Um, you can add just regular oats. I think I'll start with that. It's a big container of oats. That, that's um, the same jar I store my rolled oats in. That's so funny, that big, huge glass yes. jar. Yep, that's what I store my rolled oats in. I love them. They're so great, and they're kind of hard to find. Well, I've had my, so, I've had mine for like over 20 years. I have a couple of really big ones yeah. like that, yeah. Yeah, I found mine at a yard sale because it's they are hard to find, mm -hmm. actually. So, But they're great. I have one for flour as well. Yeah. So I just dumped in about a quarter cup of oats. You can also use um, uh, seeds as well, just to thicken it up. So this is already um, a little bit thick. I might want a, a little thicker. So maybe I'll use a little oat flour. So I am more of a cook than a baker from what I've heard because um, I've, I love the analogy that um, baking is a science and cooking is an art, I think is how I've heard it. And I don't love to measure. <laughs> um, I, I measure, but you know, I, I like the kind of throw a pinch in and you know, I, I'm not super precise. So if we need to bake something, my husband usually does that because he will measure and level and, and all of that. So yeah, well, if you're I've, I've been cooking since I was nine years old. And before I started teaching classes, I would just go in the kitchen and just create something. And then I had to, yeah. I had to train myself, to take a piece of paper and measure everything because if you're going to teach somebody how to do something, you know, it's, kind of, but then, you know, if you think about our ancestors, you know, old recipes from grandma or great grandmother, they usually had like handful, smidge, pinch, you know? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So true. So I'm going to use a pinch of salt and not, a, you don't have to add salt at all, but um, like I said, because we usually use these on longer runs or rides, um, usually we're looking to replace some salt. So we toss in some salt, but you're right. I forgot to grab, I'll grab it in a minute, but um, I created four recipes that are um, right now in the Forks Over Knives. It's on newsstands. So the spring edition is out and um, I created some salad. They asked me to create some salad recipes for kids and it was so different in creating those. I was measuring very carefully and taking notes and it wasn't the normal way that I I usually cook. So <laughs> challenge. Right. So yeah. But you know, everything came out consistently. So I just dumped um a table or I'm sorry, a teaspoon of um vanilla in there along with the salt and a little bit more oat flour. So um we'll get see how we get here. Um, I was going to say too, my um, mother-in-law, so my, my father-in-law was diagnosed with brain cancer um, like a week before COVID hit. And he had brain surgery um, a week before COVID, about probably an eighth of a cup of more oats just to, just for consistency. Um, and she makes these, they, they decided to go plant-based. Um, and he was a Montana cowboy who would cut the fat off his eat it. Um, so it was a big step for them to go plant-based, but she makes these and, um, she adds like raisins and, um, like she uses a lot of oats and they, they taste like, like a oatmeal raisin cookie. Um, and she just has them in the fridge, you know, for them to snack on and they're delicious. 
So at this point, you can do all kinds of add-ins. So um, I didn't say, but kids love to help make these. I mean, really, they're super fun. It's like working with Play-Doh. You know, you get to roll balls. Um, but you can add whatever you want in there. So um, I've got some chia seeds. Those are kind of fun because um, they are great for you, for omegas. But I'm going to use a tablespoon here. But um, also, you'll spend the next 20 minutes getting them out of your teeth. It's like a, the gift that keeps on giving, you know? <laughs> you have um, chewy, chewy things that you find in your teeth. So chia seeds, you can use hemp hearts, um, goji berries we like to add. Um, you can add, like I said, my mother-in-law does raisins. Um, I like to just put one chocolate chip on top, but you could add chocolate chips into them as well. Um, so really, you know, the sky's the limit. Sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds. Um, sometimes I use flax meal as well, which it's like the oat flour. You can buy flax seeds and grind them up, or you can find, now it's pretty easy to find regular, regular flax meal in the grocery store. And what I love about these two, um, I think I mentioned the last time, you don't need a specialty store to find any of this stuff. This is stuff that every major grocery store is going to have. So at this point, this is what it looks like. And if you want, you can use, you know, a, one of those little scoops that makes perfect cookies. I do. I just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just do like this and roll them into a ball. And um, I'll show you in a minute. I've got a cookie tray that I just have lined with a silicone mat, but you can use parchment paper as well. Um, and you can just place those on there. And, um, you know, with kids, it's fun. Like in the winter time, you can roll these in coconut and they look like little snowballs. Um, we really like them rolled in cacao nibs. You can also add cocoa powder if you wanted some, some benefits of cocoa as well. Right. But yeah, you just, um, place those on there like that. And then what I do is I just usually take, <clears throat> excuse me, one chocolate chip and stick it in the middle. But nice. you could do a goji berry, you could do whatever else you wanted in there nice. as well. Nice. Yeah. And for those people who are listening, like I just wanted to, you know, some people are, are going to say, because you mentioned um, before you were vegan, you used honey. And I get asked this question mm -hmm. all the time and people don't understand. Mm -hmm. It's just that honey comes from a bee and a bee is right classified as an animal. And so people who, are, people who are vegan, we don't use any products from animals whatsoever, such as honey. But I do want people to know that honey is a healthier version than white refined sugar. Uh, it's just different classifications. But I also yes. wanted to add that I do not use agave because mm -hmm. agave is higher in fructose than high fructose corn syrup. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't get digested in your digestive tract. It actually bypasses that and gets digested in your liver. So agave is intensely sweet. Right. I like maple syrup. I mm -hmm. like the date syrup that Rachel used and brown rice syrup. All of them are fantastic. Yeah, yeah. they're all so much better than white refined sugar. And I think most people, if they follow me and if they follow Rachel, they know that white refined sugar is not even a food. It's a yeah. chemical. And it makes yeah. a huge, huge difference in your health. It's always the first thing that I tell people to cut out, mm -hmm. you know, is to get rid of that white refined sugar. And as Rachel mentioned, you know, when she was talking about that peanut butter powder, well, actually, Rachel mentioned the almond butter, peanut butter. Make sure you read the labels. Mm -hmm. They just sneak that in there. They yeah. really do. I mean, people are always surprised when I tell them that. They go, ah. You know, I buy this peanut butter. Some people even go, it's organic peanut butter. Right. And then when they go back and they check the label, they go, oh, my God, you you were right. Even though it's organic and I think I'm doing my body good, I read the label. It also has, like, sugar in it. Yeah. It's something that people have to really pay attention to. And uh, so yeah. this snack that Rachel's making is going to replace those white sugars or desserts. And you know what? If you have her snack on hand in your refrigerator, then when you have a craving for something sweet, you're going to reach for one of those. You're not going to reach for something that's unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And that makes a huge difference in your overall health. And Rachel was just telling me about this uh, bike ride that her and her husband went on. 
And I can't even believe she's you got to tell us like how far you rode and everything, because the only reason why I think you're so healthy and you could ride your bike for so long is yeah. because of the healthy, whole food, plant based lifestyle that you live. Right. Yeah. Tell, tell us about that trip. Yeah, it is so true. Yeah. So this weekend, um, we um, went with two couples down to um, Santa Barbara and did a four day bike trip. And um, over the four days, we we rode each day and, and we rode something like 113 miles and did um, almost 13,000 feet of elevation gain climbing. Um, and <clears throat> you're right. I mean, this um, eating this way, you will notice your levels of energy that you um, maybe thought, oh, that was just because I was younger. That's why I had that kind of energy. And when we transitioned, we felt like we had more energy than we did when we were in college. And that's when we thought we were like, oh, you know, we had all this energy. Um, and I, I like to tell the story because my husband was part of a mountain bike cycling group. And um, when we started eating this way, we ate you know, whole food, plant-based, no oil at home. But at lunch, he's got a um, taqueria across the street from where he works. And he would go get often tacos or um, a carne asada burrito. And so every Wednesday before he would ride, he'd get that carne asada burrito because he thought he needed the energy, the, the meat. He's lactose intolerant, so he wouldn't get cheese or sour cream, but he thought he needed that meat for the energy. And for two weeks in a row, he had... Um, you know, a meeting with a client run over, have time to go get those uh, burritos. So he just ate what he had, you know, some leftovers from home, um, maybe a packaged soup or something, you know, all whole food plant-based uh, lunches. And he said, you know, those two weeks when he was riding, all of a sudden he was at the front of the pack. He felt really good. He, he was like, what is different? What is going on? And he realized that that carne asada burrito was in fact not helping him. It was hurting him. And so that really helped solidify it for him. But yeah, you're right. I mean, we have more energy, but not only that, we recover so much better, you know, so especially if you're doing there's there's endurance athletes who do this. I mean, um, Formula One driver all the way to Scott Jurek and ultra runner. So, you know, when people can run, you know, 100 plus miles eating this way, I'm pretty sure doing our normal thing. But um, um, but we really notice it in recovery. A lot of friends, we're, we're mid 40s now, and a lot of friends take Advil or, you know, pain pills like candy because they have all these aches and pains. And that has to do with inflammation a lot of the times in your body. And eating this way helps your body um, get rid of and deal with inflammation. So it really is fantastic, especially for endurance kind of um, sports. But also our kids notice the benefits. They, they played some comp sports and, um, you know, as teenagers, they didn't have the acne that their friends had. You know, I mean, at all age levels, um, you can really notice benefits from from deciding to eat this way. Yeah, that's awesome. Anti-inflammatory foods. They're fantastic. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they really are. And they taste so good, too. I mean, that's the other thing. Um, you know, when I people have asked why 10 days and um, I, you know, 10 days is a good enough time amount of time to really start to notice the benefits. I mean, I had to put in the beginning of the book to check with your doctor, because if you are on medication, especially blood pressure medication, medication for diabetes, um, even within two days, you might need to take less of your medication eating this way because your body adapts that quickly. Um, and the other thing that happens is our taste buds literally change about every two weeks. So once, like you said, once you give up that white refined sugar, that white refined flour, you know, I, I start with dairy. I tell people to get rid of dairy first um, and then meat and then, you know, processed food, sugars, all that. But um, whatever kind of white food you get rid of first, you will start to notice. And, and then at the end of 10 days, two weeks, you'll start to notice that things like red peppers taste so sweet. You know, um, peaches in the summer are almost now too sweet for me. And I used to have a sweet tooth. So, um, and things like, you know, chocolate are not off the table. You can find, I mean, the chocolate chips I'm using are non-dairy, you know, chocolate chips. Um, cacao is a great uh, replacement as well. So it's not like you have to give up all the things you loved. Um, <clears throat> which leads me to the next thing I want to show you how to make. The Snickers? The Snickers, yes. So I'll show you what they look like. 
I made some last night and stuck them in the freezer. And um, these are like the world's easiest. They're like bite-sized Snickers bars. <laughs> so um, all this is, is a date and almond butter and chocolate chip. And I know like you have a recipe. Some people have amazing recipes where they drizzle chocolate on and do all kinds of stuff. But th these are like the easiest mm -hmm. uh, Snickers out there. So just um, another thing that's great to have on hand, you can make these, stick them in the freezer. Um, even if they're in there for 15 minutes or something, um, they're great. You don't even have to put them in the freezer, but um, pull them out five minutes before you want to eat them if they froze overnight. And um, they're such a tasty snack. So high fiber, you're getting lots of fiber. And um, dates are so wonderful. They really give a caramely kind of taste. So these that I use for this are medjool dates, but I just want to show you the difference. I grew up eating dates because I had grandparents who wintered in Arizona. And um, they grow a lot of dates in Arizona and Southern California. And um, I think these are actually Dr. Greger's favorite. And I have to agree with him, soft bar he dates. So I don't know if you can see the, the difference in size in these guys. Mm -hmm. um, these are like little bites of caramel for real. <laughs> and um, you can just stick this container in the fridge or even the freezer. Um, and as they are in the fridge, they'll start to like the sugar crystals will come out of them. I mean, they just get sweeter and sweeter. Um, but we'll want to use the medjool. Um, there's also some other um, kind grinders or bigger ones, but um, just use some medjools. are probably the easiest to find in, in every grocery store pretty much now has them. And uh, it's super simple. Again, this is something you could, you know, make with your kids or um, really easy to make. So you want to the date open and just pull out the little pit. Uh, soft. Sometimes, you know, you can get a, these in bags at Costco as well. Um, and they don't have to be in the fridge, which is nice. Just take these guys all out. I saw um, Carly Bodrug, I believe is her name. Um, the plant you gal, she um, makes a drink out of ground up uh, seeds. I haven't tried doing that, but that is an amazing <clears throat> way to use the. Yeah, so, sometimes I mean I know the seeds are hard and everything, but grinding them up. Yeah. The apple seeds I know yeah. um, are really good, and a lot of times we throw them out because they yeah. they, take a, they take a little more work. Like you're talking about this lady uh -huh. who grinds it up and everything, but. Sometimes, you know, again, I bet our ancestors walking the planet, they used every single part of the plant, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I don't peel a lot of things. You know, I, I, I some of it, I don't know if it's entirely true, but, you know, potatoes and carrots, like a lot of nutrients are in the skin. One thing I started doing this, this year um, after uh, Rip Esselstyn talked about not peeling kiwis. So the entire I hadn't done before. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't peel my vegetables, and it's so interesting because then I teach a cooking class, and a lot of the students ask me that question. I think it becomes second nature to yeah. people to just go ahead and peel, and it's right. like, no, I don't peel my vegetables unless right. it's a, unless it's a texture thing. But other than yeah. that, most of your vitamins and minerals are located right underneath the skin, and that's yeah. another thing that. You and I can teach people leave the skin on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, sometimes, um, you know, a few recipes, like I had one that was for um, beets. <clears throat> so I'd roast beets. And when I took the skin off, I would just eat the skin. It was so delicious, honestly. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's not just the vitamins and minerals. Sometimes the taste is really good in those, too. So yeah, um, that's true. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So um, this is what they look like. I just stick three non-dairy chocolate chips in there. And same thing, pop them on your mat to go in the freezer and um, stick these in the freezer. And, you know, you can eat them in 15 minutes. You can pull them out a month from now. Um, I don't actually know how long they last because ours don't last longer than probably a month, unless there was a container down the bottom we missed, but we've never had them go bad. Um, but again, I'm sure you could do this with, you know, any kind of nut butter you like, but for kind of that Snickers taste, you've got your caramely flavor with the date. You've got your nutty. I use chunky 
uh, almond butter. So you have kind of that nutty crunch and then just a little bit of non-dairy chocolate chips to um, really taste delicious, like a little snack size Snickers bar that's actually good for you. Simple, easy, delicious, yes. good for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's what we're all about around here. <laughs> yeah, I have a Snickers version in my dessert cookbook that is it's layers and you have to make it mm. and then put it in the freezer and make the layers. So it's a little time consuming. So I really like your version that's quick, you know, and your version, I can just see kids making it, but I have a feeling the kids <laughs> would put way more than three chocolate chips on it. They'd probably like trying to stuff all kinds of chocolate chips on it. Yes. Yes. You know, um, they do. And you know, the other thing you can melt down the chocolate chips and drizzle it on if you want. Instead, my daughter, when you said that <clears throat> she would often, um, they're, they're both now in college now. So they're 19 and 21. They're away at college and they choose to eat this way. Whole food, plant-based, no oil on their own because of how they feel. Um, but when she's home, she would melt some chocolate chips and then she would like slice bananas and dip them, you know, or strawberries or whatever, dip them in the chocolate, put it on a tray like that, stick it in the freezer, you know, if we didn't have a dessert. And, you know, 15 minutes later, pull it out and it's hardened up a little bit. So yeah, you can do wonderful things with a little uh, non-dairy chocolate. <laughs> Absolutely. So now, did you want to share, you had talked about um, Alzheimer's disease mm -hmm. and is it your father? But yet he's showing some positive benefits from eating yeah. healthy food. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, I would say that um, he was um, diagnosed sometime in the last three years, <clears throat> excuse me, three or four years. And um, yeah, you know, um, stopping eating fast food, stopping drinking soda, um, those kind of things. He's really um, then at a holding place, which is not all that normal for people um, who have been diagnosed. So yes, um, I would say that that um, he is doing better. He also lost a lot of weight immediately. You know, initially my mom um, it was right after he stopped driving and my mom was really concerned, like he's lost all this weight, you know, like 30 pounds or something. And um, she was thought there was some health thing, but we realized, you know, he would, he would get donuts or um, these kind of high fat, you know, snacks uh, when he was out or um, running errands. And so once he stopped doing that and eating more healthy food, it's really, it really has helped. And um, I gave them the book, um, Dr. Sharzai, Dean and Aisha Sharzai. Um, they have a Alzheimer's solution book, the 30 day Alzheimer's solution. It's a cookbook. It talks about brain health in the beginning, and then it has a bunch of recipes. Um, and I, I gave that to them and she makes some of those. And then my father-in-law with brain cancer as well, you know, they weren't able to get the entire tumor because of where it was on his brain. But um, they started eating plant based, he, uh, he did chemo, he did radiation, all of that. Um, but he's, you know, it's been three years for him. And he gets checked every three months, um, still, and he hasn't had any um, new growth on the tumor, which really makes sense for back to that, the, the China study book by T. Colin Campbell, when, you know, when he discovered that animal protein specifically turns on cancer, I mean, it, it grows cancer cells. You could eat the same amount or five or 10 or 20 times the amount of plant protein. And that doesn't feed um, tumor growth. You know, if you have a foci cell, a cluster of, um, cancerous cells that they don't get fed by, by plants. Um, so, you know, the fact that he's cut out all animal products and he just eat plants really is a testament. And um, he's got glioblastioma. So when doctors, especially hear that he's made it this long with that kind of cancer, they're really, they're really impressed. So it's, um, this is not, you know, out there kind of esoteric stuff for us. This is really affecting our family members. And, you know, when we look around, like I said, you know, some of these, these reasons people give, like, um, it's going to be more expensive, you know, that's a big 
myth to bust, I feel like, because, um, you know, none of these ingredients are the expensive ingredients at the store. You know, when you put meat and cheese and oil and um, processed foods in your cart, those are the most expensive things. So when you remove those, you can literally fill your cart with fruits and vegetables and beans and seeds and nuts even that used to seem so expensive. And you will still come out ahead because real food isn't isn't all that expensive. And you don't need a whole foods, you know. Um, I have a soup recipe from Jeff Novick that he created for his, I believe, 10-year-old daughter to make. So he says, if you have a pair of scissors, a can opener, and a big pot, you can make the soup. And um, he made sure that you could make this um, if you were shopping at a dollar store. So, you know, if you go to, it's not usually where I shop for groceries, but if you go in, you can pick up lentils or beans and rice, grains. Um, you can pick up frozen vegetables or canned vegetables, um, and you can eat nutritious food. Um, stay away from all those, you know, snack food aisles in the middle. And but, another thing too, um, when you start eating healthy, whole foods, plant-based, you're not paying for, you mentioned earlier, the Advil, the Tylenol, whatever. I have not taken any of that in 30 years. If yeah. I ever feel down or something's up with me, I turn to plants, food, always. Mm -hmm. And so that's a big savings that many people spend a lot of money on over the counter. And then if they're even sicker, they're spending a lot of money on the prescription drugs, which don't even get me right. started on those they are so terrible for you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, definitely, definitely mm -hmm. you, you save money in other places and yes. buying, you know, dried beans, dried whole grains, you know, I buy big, bags of them, which makes them even cheaper. Those are your stables. And there's another great thing about them is that they don't go bad, right? Right. They're non-perishable. And yeah. so I think that is a, a myth that mm -hmm. it's um, more expensive. I think it's, it's different and people find that challenging because it's different, but Mm -hmm. Once you start doing it, and I like your 10 days that you give people, um, you know, just do this 10 days and then add on, add on. It becomes second nature. It really does. It becomes second nature. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, these days it's like pros and cons to having more plant based labels out there, because as we said, with the nut butters, you have to read no matter what it says on the front, you need to read what the ingredients are. And a lot of things, you know, I think there's plant based Reese's peanut butter cups now, you know, which, you know, OK, technically, you know, they're made from plants, but it doesn't mean it's good for you. Um, but there are a lot of processed options now, you know, for fake eggs or cheese or sausage or whatever. And and um, yeah. Uh, you know, some people use those as transition foods and um, I can see a place for it there. Or if you absolutely can't find anything else at a restaurant, you know, an impossible burger or beyond burger is, is can be a better choice. But, you know, for the planet, yes, but maybe not that much better for your health. You know, um, yes, I would still argue that that plant based burger is better for you, but it's probably has a ton of coconut oil and a ton of oil in it, a ton of fat in it, saturated fat that you don't need that your body doesn't process well. So and, and genetically <laughs> modified ingredients. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's hard now because um, people get excited about all these products that are out there, but it really is, like you said, the staples, you know, um, those are what you want to be eating primarily. And I, and I, when I consult with people who are just starting or feel challenged by making this switch, I ask them to make a list, especially this is helpful with kids. Like, what are your favorite foods? We did this with our kids and it was like, you know, at six and eight, it was like macaroni and cheese they loved. Um, that was a treat, a macaroni and cheese out of the box when a babysitter came. Um, they loved lasagna and enchiladas and hamburgers. And um, so we just, we went to the internet and looked up, okay, a whole food plant-based burger. You know, and at the time where there was a basic black bean burger, now there's like gazillions when you look it up. But um, we looked up a cashew cheese that we could make. Um, so we replaced our macaroni and cheese with a cashew cheese sauce and we tossed in some broccoli or peas and and they loved it. And, you know, they'd go to friends' houses and be excited to have regular old mac and cheese and they'd come home and be like, it was gross. It didn't even it taste gross. 
<laughs> yeah. So, you know, find a few, like you said, a few of your favorite meals. You know, you can make lentil sloppy joes. You can make amazing. We have a lasagna recipe um, that we make that even people who aren't plant-based love. They don't even know it's, you know, a plant-based lasagna when they eat it. The mushrooms give it like a chewy, meaty kind of texture and um, it's just delicious. So find a few favorites and, and use those first. And then if you want to branch out, you can. And if you don't want to, you can have, you know, your favorite meal three times a week if you want. That's just fine too. So and yeah, back to what you're saying about taking anything. We don't take anything either. The only thing we take is a vitamin B12. And that that's something you do need um, if you're not eating animals. But outside of that, um, we took vitamin D for a while. You know, I, I tend to side with um, Dr. Campbell's research and a lot of Dr. Gregor's too about um, supplements actually doing you more harm than good oftentimes. So um, you want to get you want to get what you need from real foods. Your body uses them differently uh, when it's in a whole food package. You know, a lot of people ask about the oil and we don't eat oil um, for the same reason you don't pour oil down your drain because it clogs the pipes. That's basically the, the rudimentary explanation for what happens in your body as well. Um, so, you know, if you love olive oil, then eat olives. You'll get that olive oil in there, but you'll also, your body will digest it with the fiber that's attached to those olives and it'll be healthy for your body rather than something your body has a hard time processing that then leads to inflammation. So, so I want to ask you um, before we leave and everything, cause I like asking this out of my guests and everything. So, and this is a hard question for me to answer myself. That's why I like, yes. So I have created thousands and thousands of recipes and I'm sure you have created, I don't know how many, but 11, 13 years, you probably have thousands of recipes. What's your favorite recipe you ever created? Oh, that's so hard. It um, is, it's a hard question. I know. I know because, you know, we try to eat, I mean, we eat frozen vegetables. You know, for a while it was like, um, that's another myth, you know, like only eat fresh stuff, you know? So, um, I mean, if I had all the time in the world, raw would be amazing, but most people don't have, you know, all that time to, to cook like that. So we use frozen, you know, veggies and all that, but we try to eat fresh. So it's like, depending on the season, we have different favorites. Um, I would say right now, one of our go-to that we love is tostadas. Um, and mainly because I, I love crunchy, like I love chips, you know, sweet things aren't actually hard for me. I love salty, crunchy Thank chips. You. So... Yeah, yeah. Finding out, um, I learned from this woman a few years ago that if you just put a corn tortilla, I mean, we would make chips in the oven, cut them into triangles, but it's a pretty time consuming process, but that's what we do. Um, but she said, if you just put, you know, two tostadas on a plate, corn tortillas, that's it. Stick them in the microwave for two minutes and 30 seconds, flip them, do them two minutes. You have a crunchy taco shell. And um, so that is so delicious. So we often, I mean, sometimes three times a week we'll make tostadas and it's just, you know, the, the crunchy shell. And then we make up some refried beans and some rice. And then we always have cabbage, red onion, fresh jalapenos and cilantro. And then from there it's, you know, do we make a mango salsa or regular salsa or whatever else sounds good. Maybe some avocado. Um, but yeah, I would say tostadas are probably our go-to and you can make that in a bowl form. You know, I think we do it often with guests too, because everybody can put on what they like, you know? So everybody will go, oh my gosh, this was the best bowl, the best dinner ever. And it's like, well, you got to pick what you put on that. That's why you love it so much. So that's probably one of our favorites right now. But outside of that, you know, I could eat, um, we've got a few different burger recipes that we make. I could eat burgers. We do, um, French fries in the air fryer. That was a COVID purchase for me. And I have a cheap one. This is like $29.99 on sale. Um, it's one of those basket ones, but we make French fries in those. Same thing, you know, they're they're crunchy like fries. We put Cajun seasoning on them. Um, they're delicious. So yeah. Yeah, I've got yeah, I've are... got one of those cheap air fryers, but it doesn't matter because it still works great. And um, yeah. you can put lot. Have you ever tried um rutabaga? Make rutabaga fries in there. It's really good. Oh, no. That would be delicious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We do sweet potatoes sometimes, yep. sweet potato fries. Sweet potato is yeah. my favorite yeah. for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So good. Um, it's, for me, my favorite recipe is usually according to the season. And I always mm -hmm. get so excited. I'm like, oh, this is 
this is my favorite recipe, but then it's like winter time. I have a favorite recipe, springtime. I have a favorite recipe. And a lot of times my favorite recipe is a recipe I just created because I get all, but yeah. my all time favorite yeah. is my macaroni and mochi, which is my version mm. of macaroni and cheese that that was one of the first recipes I learned when I was a little kid from my mom and she would make the white sauce and then she would add the mm. cheese no boxed macaroni and cheese or anything. So yeah. <laughs> when I became vegan and healthy and everything and whole foods, I created my version and that's in my first cookbook, which means I created the recipe mm -hmm. like 25 years ago. I still make that recipe. In fact, I made it yesterday and I put peas and sauteed tempeh and onions and sweet potato in it. Mm -hmm. So I love your idea. You were talking about your macaroni and cheese too, that you put vegetables in it. That's fantastic. Yeah. And that's, that's a great way for kids who mm -hmm. may be picky. You might be able to get some vegetables if you throw it in there with your vegan macaroni and cheese. That's a great idea. Yeah, to get veggies in there too. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can ask them, you know, it's sometimes, sometimes how you phrase the question, like not would you like vegetables in your mac and cheese, but which green vegetable would you like in your mac and cheese, you know, <laughs> or what vegetable would you like in there tonight? So yeah, yeah, they like that. You know, when you were talking seasonally, my new favorite thing, because usually um, pesto, we really love pesto. Our kids didn't love red sauce when they were young. So usually in the summer, I would grow basil and then make a bunch of um, vegan whole, you know, no, no oil. Um, we use nutritional yeast instead of cheese and I, we use walnuts cause we like those better than pine nuts. And, and I'd put a bunch in the freezer to use all year long. Um, and this year I discovered carrot top pesto. So you can use, you know, two bunches of carrot tops, or if I only have one bunch, like yesterday, I made it with a, you know, a couple handfuls of arugula and same kind of thing. And, and it's fresh, you know, so, so tasty on pasta or over a bowl or, Today I dipped, you know, my my potatoes in it. So yeah, nice. yeah, lovely and fresh. Arugula, one of my all time favorites. But I get into mm -hmm. it in the summertime. I just can't get enough of it because, in fact, yeah. I planted arugula seeds yesterday in my backyard. <laughs> hooray! Hooray! That's awesome. I've never grown arugula actually. I should. I grew it because I grew it last year, and I don't really have a green thumb. I plant stuff, but. I spend all my time in the kitchen if stuff grows, but, but last year the arugula thrived. So I was so excited. Wow. I'm like, yeah, I got to plant that every year now for sure. So even yeah. if you don't know what you're doing, you don't have a green thumb, try arugula because it seems to grow pretty darn good. That's awesome. Like mint. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, I made the mistake of planting mint once and it spread, I mean, I was pulling it up for years. I have, <laughs> but we have, I have mint that, I don't know how many years, but a long time ago, my mom's side of the family, her ancestors came over here from England and they brought their mint plant and they planted it way up north in the upper peninsula where <laughs> my great grandparents, that's where they first came over. That's where they lived. And throughout the family, they've passed down this mint plant. So when I moved into my house 16 years ago, my mom gave me this mint plant that comes from England from a long time ago. <laughs> and I planted it and it did exactly what you said. It just took over and that's totally fine. I keep it like in a one place and everything. Um, and it, it just, it just warms my heart <laughs> that this mint plant has come from so far away, you know? Yeah. <laughs> are you, are you good? <laughs> <laughs> that's okay hey do you have do you have that magazine i wanted you to show everybody yeah go get that magazine yeah she's gonna go grab that magazine she was featured in a magazine with some salad recipes and um it's pretty uh it's a proud day when uh you're featured in a magazine like that and i'm sure she'll get a lot of yeah, of views and people reading it. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, it's super fun. And it's page 76. And they did a beautiful job with the spread. I'll show you here. Salads for the kids. Beautiful. Um, yeah, so super fun ideas, especially, I mean, adults love them as well. But yeah, lots of tasty recipes in here. Spring edition, out right now. Awesome. On stands. That's awesome. Hey, yeah. you need to give you need to give everybody information like um, 
your website or Facebook or however yes. you want people to connect with you. Yeah. Let, what's your information? For sure. Yeah. So you can find the book anywhere you get books. Um, uh, it's on Amazon. There's an audio book. Um, my website is www.forforkssakebook.com. And um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram at For Forks Sake Book as well. So yeah, I would love to hear from you. Check out the book. Do yourself some good and the planet some good by, by eating plants. Okay, let's see those desserts again. Oh yeah, here we go. Cheers. And the happy peanut butter bowls. Yeah. Those are so colorful and pretty. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. People always love them. Yeah. Fun to make a variety and serve them for dessert. Yeah. All right. So any last minute thoughts that you want to share? Um, I don't think so. Enjoy some plants. Enjoy some sunshine out there. And um, yeah, check out for forksakebook.com. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Rachel, for coming on and being my special guest. Not once, but twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Thank you, Val, for having me. It was really fun to yeah. do. Fun to get to know. Now that we have the technical difficulties worked out, for sure, anytime you want to share a recipe or you got anything you want to share, just uh, contact me and uh, you can come back on. It's been a pleasure talking to you and getting to know you. And I'm so envious about these bike rides that you do. <laughs> <laughs> They're fun. Come out to California. We'll take you for a ride. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'll ever get to California. Hey, oh, before we go, do you ever see the big redwoods? I want to see the big redwoods. We live about a half a block away from the redwoods. So I ran yesterday morning in the redwoods. Yeah, we live next to a state park, Henry Cowell State Park. So they're they're literally right there. <laughs> that, yeah. That might be the only thing that brought me out there. I don't know. So do you have you ever stood next to them and just Oh, yeah. their energy. I can know. Yeah, there's a one mile. Yeah, it's incredible. There's a one mile loop, loop that you can walk. That's just a flat loop. And you can go in the tree that um, uh, FDR went in and they used to have it was a hotel room. So you can fit 60 people. It burned out in the middle because the trees protect themselves, but they can live through fires. And um, the in so the inside's hollow, but the tree is still alive in this room. But you can fit 60 people inside that one tree. So they are really incredible. And the most incredible thing to me is their pine cones are about that big. They're about the size of the bar he dates. For those really? giant trees, they're just tiny little pine cones. Isn't that wild? That's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. totally awesome. Yeah. And they've done pretty well through our fires. We've had some, we were evacuated a couple years ago. And thankfully those tannins and their bark, they can survive fires, which is why they can make it so long. But um, yeah, another reason to be eating plants for the planet. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for sharing that about the redwoods. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, awesome. Definitely. All right, so we're going to sign off now. Thank you all for watching. And uh, if you want to share this with a friend, we would greatly appreciate it. Just hit that share button. And if you hit the like button, that helps the algorithms go up so more people are able to see this video. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button so you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I greatly appreciate that. All right, we're gonna say goodbye. Everybody have a wonderful day and get in the kitchen and cook. <laughs>